Hi, this is Clint or Tech Prof, and today we're talking .NET. Today specifically, I want to talk about code organization, the, the features of Visual Studio, which can help you organize your code, find things, assign tasks to yourself, know what needs to be updated if you make changes in one location, lay out your window to maximize your screen space and also at the same time being able to visualize what your form looks like while you're coding. So I'm going to go ahead and load up an example and walk you through what I think are some great tips that beginner programmers can use in order to help themselves get organized and work more efficiently. What I want to do is I want to introduce a program that I've created and I'm going to have another video that actually goes through the actual coding of this program. But the idea is, is I have this Visual Studio set up. Now, I've, the only thing I've changed in here is I've got a dark theme. But essentially what I want to do is I've set up my form. I've got everything done. So when I'm creating my project, it's best if you can set up your form first write no code whatsoever, get all your forms set up, set all your properties, your, your object names, your text, get everything you can, do your AODA, so your uh, accessibility rules for your uh, shortcut keys, your tab indexes, your accept buttons, your tool tips, and all those kind of things. Get all that done first. That will make your life a lot easier. Concentrate on user experience and coding separately. And that way you can wear one hat as a designer, have a great user experience set up for them, and then have a coding hat on, become a coder and write really good code. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, is screen space is usually a, an issue. If I go to the code window, if I right click on the form here and go to view code, or I can hit F7, and you can see that the code is here. But now as I have the code window up, I can't see my form. So if I'm a visual person and I need to visualize the form while I'm working with this, then I'm going to end up having to flip back and forth between these two tabs. And that doesn't work very well. So what I'm going to do is after I've got my form mostly designed, I'm not going to use the toolbox very often. So I'm just going to auto hide that toolbox. And also I'm not going to use my properties window very often, and I'm not going to use the solution explorer very often either. So once I've got the form designed, my use of these other windows greatly diminishes. So I'm going to actually auto hide that as well. Look at the screen space I've got. What am I going to do with that screen space? Well, let's go look at the code. That doesn't help. I can't I still can't see the form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this form and go to new vertical tab group or sorry, new vertical document group. And what that does is it gives me this space where I can move this over and, and shrink this down where I've got a great space. I can see the form right in front of me, but I also have plenty of room here for coding and not worrying about word wrapping and those kind of things. So that's tip number one. Set up your environment so that you can see what you're doing. If you have multiple monitors, you can in fact take this out and make it a separate window. You can size it any way you want and you can make it a separate window, even throw it on another monitor. But if you don't have two monitors, you only have one monitor, then you can do that. Once you pop out the window, you can very easily put it back in by dragging it to this little icon in the middle. And that will allow me to, um, that being able to do that will allow me to move over this. So I can move over that. I can pop it back out again and then move over this one. So I can set up my document groups in the most efficient way that I can. The next thing I want to show you is that, see the amount of code that I've got here? So I've got 300 some odd lines of code here. And as you're, like that's actually a really small program, but as you're learning, now trying to find things and going to find information and looking where things are, there are some tools built into Visual Studio which will help you navigate through your code. So for instance, when you create a function, it automatically tracks where that is, what calls it, and where it's actually defined. So for instance, here I have created a function called isNumeric. So I created that function and I'm like, okay, what is isNumeric? isNumeric is actually a Visual Basic command. It's not a C-sharp command. So 
where is that defined? So how is that defined and how does it work? Well, on any function or method, whether it's a .NET Framework function or method or a custom one you developed yourself, you can actually right click on that method and say go to definition or hit F12. And so when you go to that, it'll jump the code immediately to where that procedure has been defined. That's fantastic because then I can always go and do it. So to go along with that, if I have a function and let's say I'm like, okay, I'm going to change this function so that I can say, let's make a, let's make this a double and let's use a minimum value and a double as a maximum value. So I've changed the signature of that function, the, fun the signature being the type, the return value, the name, and the parameter list. And since I've changed the, the signature of that function, anywhere where I've called that function actually won't work. So if I scroll all the way back up to where I use that, woohoo, see, this is the problem. Where, where did I use this thing? Like I, now I gotta try and find it, right? So, okay, where did I use this? Uh, okay, well, actually, there's an error message right here. Okay, so there, that's where I used it. And the problem is, is that is numeric is now expecting three parameters where I have actually only provided one. I've, I've provided this. And so I now need to update this. But let's say you've used that function in many, many different places. Okay, so if I go back here and say go to definition, I go back here, I've used this in many, many places. What I can actually do is right click on the function in its declaration and say, find all references. And that will bring a pop-up window, which literally lists everywhere where you've called that function. So if you need to update it, then you can do this. It'll give you every time you've used that function, you can double click on it and it will go straight to the code where that has been used. And then you can make your changes. I'm gonna go back and change that back so I'm going to say, go to definition. I'm just going to get rid of these parameters so I didn't break my program, okay, and go from that. But the go to definition and find all references is very powerful when you get larger programs in order to find where things are, all right? So that's, that's a really big hit. The other thing is, is that you get so much code that it's hard to find. Okay, so where was that function? And I literally just saw me a minute ago, like, where is that function? So one of the concepts that's built in Visual Studio is this concept of a region, okay? So as a good programmer, I have a comment header at the top and I can collapse that in Visual Studio so I can sort of get rid of it. Like once I write it, I'm never gonna look at it again until I need to make a change. The other thing is this region using. So this is built in by default into most Windows Forms applications and it has this default list. I'm never gonna use link, I could get rid of it, but for now I'm gonna leave it just because I don't wanna break anything. And I, I want to get rid of that too, because I'm never going to look at it. So I can, but this using dot, dot, dot really doesn't tell me very much. So the concept is Visual Studio has this concept called regions. And so I can create this region by doing hashtag region, a space, and then just type some text and some descriptive text. And then with the end of that region, I put hashtag end region. And what this does is it makes a collapsible group within your code. And so I can now collapse the region. And what is great is when I collapse it, the description is all I see using statements. That's pretty cool. All right. So let me collapse a couple more things. So when I organize my code, I want to lay things out. So if I do have global variables or constant declarations that I have within my form, I'm going to put them all sort of in a group together. And Global variables are something you don't change very often. You try and avoid them and not use them when you don't have to. Um, but once you set them, you rarely change them or rarely go back and, and edit them. So I'm gonna put those into a region called global variable decorations and collapse it away. And there you go. Those are all now gone out of my, my thing. Within your code, you're gonna have event handlers, methods, functions, subroutines, and all kinds of other areas. So it's 
in your best interest to take things that are similar and put them together. So for instance, form events are something that you can probably put all together. So I have a main form load function here and let me, let me collapse this up. Okay. And so that event of loading the form, I'm going to put into a region called events. And then I have an exit button click. I have a reset button click. I have a calculate button click that has a bunch of code in it. Um, and those kind of things. So I'm going to put all those into an event system. Okay. And so I'm going to collapse events out and all that code. So a hundred lines, lines 46 to 146. I just collapsed a hundred lines of code. So if I'm not going to touch the events anymore, I just collapse them out. You can also nest the regions. So for instance, under events, I have a, a region called custom methods and functions. But when you have custom uh, methods and functions, you may have categories or subcategories you want to do. So you can do these regions. So, so I'm going to do, okay, I have data validation functions. So I have an is numeric test. I have a validate my names test. I have a validate an individual name uh, method. I have a validate the scores method. Uh, and those are all validation. So I'm going to create a region called validation functions. There we go. And then I have other general functions, things like set defaults, which is a very current common one. And this one actually should be capital S. I should fix that. So let's go to uh, find all references. You can see that there are no references to it. So let's go ahead and put that back to what it was. Right click, say find all references. Okay, I've called it twice. So let's go to those locations, change the name. It will cause an error in a minute. Okay, and then I can go to the um, to the this and then go to the other one. There it is. Change the name, capitalize it. Okay, now I can go back to the function where I actually was working on it. Okay, and change the name here. So now all of those are up to date. I've got no errors. I'm good. I can go here, go find all references. I found the two references. I'm good. So I can re uh, rework my code um, that way, which is awesome. So then I'm going to say, okay, set defaults is good here. I only have the one function in here for now, but I could add others later, like security things and those kind of things. We'll just collapse that up. And then I have another set of functions and uh, things. And I even have an event in here. But the reason why I put this event in here was because this is for testing only. So all of this code can likely be deleted once I've tested everything, it works and I go live, or I can just leave it here. So I have a bunch of events. I have some a global variable, which I've set up here. I have some custom methods and that, but this is all to do with testing my application. I can collapse that down as well. Now, as I have those collapsed, I can now collapse down my custom methods. There we go. Let's go back up because I had gone in here and before. let's collapse the, the events. And now you can see all of my code fits on one screen. And when I want to find something, okay, I need to change a global variable. Okay. I go in here, I collapse it in. I need to change a button click event. So let's go into events. Let's find the one we want. We can collapse these down. Okay. And we have all that kind of thing. The other thing you'll notice, I have all this extra commenting on the front. So you can actually generate XML comments automatically or semi-automatically within the code. So let me go to a function that I actually have neglected to comment yet. I'm sure there's one in here. Okay, so oh, there we go. The validate scores one. So this function here doesn't have any commenting at the top. So what I can do is I can actually go slash 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 triple slash and then hit enter. Okay. And this will create an automatic template. Now, if there's input parameters, there'll be a parameter list here. And you can go ahead and now just type in a, thing, uh, a description. So I'm going to say uh, validates multiple scores uh, all at once. There we go. Something like that. And then I can collapse that up. And it gives me that summary right here. The other thing that I can do is. I can do many, many things. You can define, um, where we are here. 
add it open. Okay. You can define additional XML documentation. So you can add exceptions. You can add input values, return values, those kind of things. You can add additional XML uh, uh, features there. And then later on, you can actually take all that information, export it to an XML file and use it to actually produce software documentation. That's pretty cool. The last thing I want to show you is the task menu. All right, this task list down here. So you have the ability while you're coding to add um, tasks for yourself, like a to-do list. There are a bunch of tasks that are already pre-built into the system. All right, so let's give you an example. So under validate scores, this is a fairly big uh, thing. And I have this code which I've commented out, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and right here add a slash slash with double slash comment. And then I'm gonna type to do. Okay, and I'm going to say after reviewing the new code, delete this comment block. Okay, so what this is, is I had an old way to do something and it was not a good way. So I commented it out and I wrote a better way to do it. All right, so I want to write myself a reminder that after I know that this one's working, then delete this one. I don't want to delete this until I know the new one is working. So I've got this too. Now, as I go to the task list, I have a to-do list. And what is awesome, if I go somewhere totally different in the code, if I go to the task list, I can double click on this and it will take me directly to that line. So that's pretty cool. You can build a self-maintained to-do list as you code. And if you do your pseudocode with to-dos, then as you complete it, you literally just take the to do out and leave the comment there because it'll now be your comment of your code and the task list that item has disappeared. To take this, I'm going to add that to do back in again here okay? because I didn't actually complete it. So I'll leave that there. The other thing is you can actually create your own custom tags. If I go to tools, options, under environment, go to task list. The default ones that are built in are hack, to do, and undone. Okay. But you can add your own, like review, Sally, security, tech prof, which means that I can write a to do and then I can write something like this. I can say, uh, tech prof, um, you are assigned this to do task. Okay. Something like that. And then under task list, you can see tech prof shows up. So if I'm tech prof, I can go to the to-do list in this project and I can see all the tasks that are assigned to me. Sally can see tasks assigned to her. You can also say, okay, so I think I've done this code. So I can say review, okay? Review this code to ensure the form formulas are correct. There you go. And now under my task list, I have a review task. So you can add your own custom tasks, work as a team, do all kinds of stuff, categorize your task list. So you know what's high priority, what's low priority, those kind of things. That is a very powerful tool within Visual Studio, especially when you're learning. And because when you're learning, you're thinking about code and you're writing code and you're like, oh, what about that? And then you're writing code and then you're like, oh, what about that? And your mind is jumping all over the place. Well, rather than jumping to those other places and doing that code, just write yourself a little to do and then go back to what you were doing so you can focus and concentrate on one thing at a time. Some fantastic tips that I wish I knew when I first started programming with Visual Studio, those alone will greatly make you more efficient, more organized, and be able to find what you're looking for easier, right? including automated commenting, which is awesome because we all love commenting, right? But as, as you can see here, I can very quickly collapse up my code and I have a very manageable code and I can go ahead and find by using go to definition and find all references, I can find everything I'm looking for. Thank you and see you in the